Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. We're live, large and in charge. It's a Wednesday morning. So good to have your company. It's time for another edition of our new Wednesday feature. No, it's not new. It's regular now. We love it. It's called So Now What? Uh, where we investigate the more unconventional side of the law. And of course, we're joined by our friend, once again, our legal expert, lawyer and director at legalese.co.za, Eitan Stern. Good to have you here, sir. Good morning. Yeah. Now, often we see videos that go viral online showing altercations between two people in a public space and it's very rare these days that anything of interest happens in a public space without someone recording it all on their phone but is it against the law to do so mm. very interesting question very yeah important very question. very relevant very interesting mm. so Eitan does that mean is it illegal to film in public okay so they, so it's not illegal to film in public you're allowed to film whatever you want the real restriction comes in what you do with the video. Ah. So you're allowed to film things um, in most circumstances, but you're not allowed to use that in every circumstance, which we'll explain in a minute. Mm. But when it comes to filming, yes, you're allowed to film, unless you're in certain circumstances where you're not allowed to film. So for example, if you were in a public bathroom, you wouldn't be allowed to film. You wouldn't, wouldn't be allowed to film someone's kids, as an example. Or if you're, say, on someone's property, like you know, in a, in a restaurant and they said you weren't allowed to or on a film set and they said you weren't allowed to. So in general, you're allowed to film unless there's specific reason that you're not allowed to film, but the restriction comes into what you do with that film. What you do with it. So just straight off the table, yeah. taking random videos of strangers okay. is not allowed. You can't just be whipping your phone out for the purpose. Well, you can, like you just said. You could film it. It's what you do with it. Yeah, okay, cool. So one thing to remember, and this is crucial, is that the laws around what you can do with filming are very, very kind of undeveloped yeah. because this idea of all of us having the ability to film yes. is really new like mm -hmm. you know just a few years old uh, just a few years old mm. so filming people filming people we have to kind of figure out what the laws are going to say about this sort of thing so filming people strangers it kind of depends on whether it's what we call direct or indirect communication direct communication means if you are involved in, in communication or if someone is speaking and in public and you're able to hear them, that's fine. You would be allowed to record it. Very different to indirect communication where someone is speaking in privacy and you like. record it in, in secret. So, you know, the law is kind of going to follow common sense with that. If you're filming something which is public, it's in a public space or you're part of it or someone is shouting in a restaurant, should be fine. Very different to if you set up a secret camera in a room where two people are speaking mm. and you record that, not fine. Well, I've seen, I feel like online, everyone, there's always a moment for someone to capture yeah. anything, whether it's a dash cam or someone whipping out their cell phone. So what happens if I'm filming something and I capture something that's of a crime or okay. a fight breaks out? Sure. What am I then legally supposed to do with that footage? Okay, so, you know, are you allowed to do it? Absolutely, and you kind of to some extent would be encouraged to take videos of, uh, of a crime breaking out because that would then be evidence of the crime. Um, if you do do it, then you, know, you can give that to the police as evidence. Um, but it's important to remember that even if you can do it, you must be really careful because if you're taking picture, a video of a crime or of a fight, you know, the people, while you might legally about, be allowed to do it, you might also be putting yourself in danger, so, which is definitely a factor. We've kind of assumed that everything should be filmed, but we must remember that, you know, you definitely can put yourself in a bit of danger like that. And what's the repercussions of posting that video online and not going to the police first with it, if it was a crime? Mm. That is really interesting, would relate to the rules of evidence, which I'd have to get back to you on. But essentially, I mean, I'd imagine if you have evidence of a crime, you would need to kind of give that to the police. Yeah. When posting things to social media, um, you know, you, the, you must make sure that you're not breaching someone's privacy rights. And there's a few other things which we can talk about in a minute mm. around posting to social media. But it's definitely sort of become a norm that everything should just be posted on social media. But you should be slowing yourself down around that. You could be breaching someone's right to privacy. You could be, um, you know, getting involved in, in, a, in a crime scene where by posting evidence without giving it to police. So if you have evidence of a crime being committed, which might be of interest to the police, my suggestion would be first give it to the police before you give it to Mark Zuckerberg. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, all right, all right. Um, on that note, we're going to take a break from this conversation. We, lots of interesting questions still coming up, and I want to ask, uh, for instance, because I did see this on social media re recently where uh, there was a, a discussion happening, if you want to call it that, yeah. uh, between uh, the law, legal authorities or the law, and a person who felt that their rights were infringed upon and a phone was whipped out and that was being filmed and how that then is handled from a sure. legal point of view. Uh, we'll be continuing our conversation with Eitan shortly. It's my feel good Yes, it is indeed, and so good to have your company at the start of a brand new day as we continue our conversation with our legal expert and friend in the law, Eitan Stern, of course, a uh, lawyer at legalese.co.za, and we're discussing the possibilities of filming with your phone and then the result of maybe having that video go viral and what the repercussions of that can be, because you're not just allowed to just film anything, apparently, <laughs> out there. And uh, even more so, Eitan, once you've um, filmed, Legally, mm -hmm. what you have, you're not just allowed to just put it on social media, are you? It. No. So people, so so the real restriction in this is around people's right to privacy. Yeah. So we're able to film because you know we have the ability to pick up our hands and do it, and we have cameras. And because life is life, and it's happening all around us. Exactly. But the restriction is what you do with it, because where it meets is people's right to privacy. So while I might legally have been allowed to take a, a picture or video of you, I'm restricted in what I can do with that because you have a right to privacy. So I can't just post it on social media or use it in an advert or put it on a, you know, do what I want with it because it's a picture of you and I might be infringing your right to privacy or, you know, any of your other personal rights. Yeah. And then if we, I mean, we see videos go viral all the time. Mm. So what do you do in the instance where a video goes viral? Is the person that's the subject of that video allowed to sue the person? Okay, really interesting question. Mm -hmm. Something we don't really think about much. Theoretically, yes. If you took a video of someone and you breached their right to privacy, and that video, so you've done something unlawful, and that video then gets goes viral and causes harm to the person in the video, then, yes, the person in the video could potentially claim against you for the harm they've suffered. And let's say they can't get a job or they lose their job or something like that because of the video, then the, the harm that you've caused to them could be quite severe. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely, legally, you should be thinking about it and you should not post things on social media if you don't have the permission from the person in it. Also, morally, like, this issue is getting worse and worse and really, you know, there's a culture that we post everything to social media, mm. but we need to slow that down because we're just at the start of videos and surveillance and yeah. uh, we need to be thinking about that. And let's also just address the point where, you know, a lot of young kids could be doing harm to their reputations yeah. going forward in future. So yeah, totally. you are a kid and you're at school and you film, let's say, a fight between a bully and whatever, and you don't necessarily share it to social media, but you share it to a WhatsApp group, right? Yeah. Mm. And somebody in that WhatsApp group posts it online. For sure. Now you have infringed on somebody's right to privacy, you've embarrassed them yeah. in the public space. Yeah. Can they then, who, who can they take action against? Is it the person that spread it or the person that filmed it and shared it in the first instance? Um, interesting question. It could probably be potentially both of them. Yeah. You know, if you are sharing something, then you are contributing to disseminating it. And if yeah. you are filming it, then you're also contributing. And that's like a really important point. And that's something, I mean, I'm quite happy I wasn't a kid when, when there was cameras, uh, cameras around because, uh, you know, it's quite a big responsibility, the ability to film anything. Yeah. So yeah. certainly something that kids out there should be watching out for, you know, just because you can film it doesn't mean you should and doesn't mean you should post it. Yeah. I'm just thinking now, a lot of influencers go to yeah. public spaces when they make videos. Most of these videos are sponsored or paid for. Mm. So I think my next question also touches on that a little bit. Am mm. I allowed to make money from videos I take? Okay, for sure. So yes, you certainly can, and a lot of people do. You know, we're on a set right now where we're making money from videos that, uh, or some, you know, like it's, it's a commercial entity. Um, journalism, influencers, filmmakers, documentary makers, these are all people that make money from a uh, film. But if you were doing that for a living, then you would understand the laws around it. Yeah. Now, we've simplified this stuff, really simplified it today um, on, to make it uh, accessible, but the laws can be quite complex. Mm -hmm. So if you are in the industry of making money or film, you need to understand how privacy works, how copyright works, how you know sponsorship works, when you, you need to understand all these things. Yeah. And then it should be fine for you to do it. And if you don't understand those things and you're just making money from filming something, 
posting it and hoping it goes viral, then you know you're kind of looking for trouble. Yeah, I think you the golden rule. Release forms. You need permission. Yeah. Signatures. For sure. Exactly. Here we go. You're yeah. in the industry, so you understand how it works. Like. Like, uh, but if you don't understand how it works, you shouldn't be doing it. And that kind of should be for everything, really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, just thinking that the golden rule should be if you are in any doubt whether what you're about to post could yeah. cause harm somebody, don't post preferable it. to not post it. Ask permission. And in fact, if you need more advice on this kind of thing, you can visit Eitan <laughs> and his friends at legalese.co.za. Thanks a lot, man. Only a pleasure.